This next problem deals with doing a wheelie on a motorcycle. So lifting the front wheel off the ground. Now this requires a fair amount of acceleration at the back tire. And we're going to do a, this example where we quantify that acceleration needed to lift the front tire off the ground. All right, so let's start this problem. So we have this motorcycle here and we're given dimensions. We're given that the mass of the motorcycle is 125 kilograms and the center of gravity is right here. And the mass of the rider is 75 kilograms, which is located right here. So let's just write our forces on here. So we have a free body diagram. We have points A, B, A and B. Um, so at A, we have our normal force at A. And then we have our normal force at B. And then we have our weight coming downward at 2. And that's going to be equal to 75 the mass times 9.81 to get a weight. And G1 here is going to be equal to 125 kilograms times 9.81. And lastly, we have friction at this back tire. So this wheel is actually moving in a direction clockwise and friction's gonna oppose that motion. So the frictional force is actually pointed to the right. I know that's sometimes difficult, a difficult concept to think about. You think friction's going to be to the left in this case, but no, it's to the right. So let's write our frictional term, and we can just call that FB, the frictional force at B. So we have our free body diagram now in terms of forces, and we can then proceed to start writing our equations. So Let's sum the forces in the y direction and set those equal to the mass times the acceleration of the center of gravity in the y direction, this equation here. So since we're dealing with a rigid body, we must put the center of gravity here. And we really have two centers of gravity, but the nice thing about this problem here is the right hand side is going to be zero because it's not accelerating upward yet. We're looking for this problem when it's going to do a wheelie, but we know it's not moving upward yet. We're just looking for the instant when the front wheel comes off the ground and that is equal when NA is equal to zero. So the normal force becomes zero, the front wheel starts lifting off the ground, but at this instant, the sum of the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. So let's do this. So we have NB upward, and we said NA is zero, and then we have our downward forces, which are 75 times 9.81, and are 125 times 9.81. And we set that equal to zero, and we should be able to solve for NB here. Let's see, NB comes out to be 19, 1962 newtons so now we have the normal force 1962 newtons upward at b and now we can look at our sum of the moments equation so really to know when this lifts off the ground we're going to use the sum of the moments so we take the sum of the moments around point b this back wheel and if we do that, neither NB or the frictional force are gonna have a component in the moments equation. We're gonna set that equal to the sum of the moments in the kinetic diagram around B. So on the left-hand side, let's first write down the sum of the moments. And I'm gonna to have to go back up. So we have the two weights acting at G2 and G1, and those are gonna be a clockwise uh, moment, so those will be negative, and then we have NA, but it's zero, so that's not, not going to be a component. So really, we just have the two weights that we need to account for in the moment equation, and they're both gonna be negative, so we have negative 75 times 9.81 times the distance. Are we given a distance there? What's the distance? So that's 0.4 and then over here is 0.8. 
Okay, so we have 0.4 here. And then we have negative 125 times 9.81 times 0.8. And then we need to set that equal to the right-hand side, the kinetic diagram, uh, moments in the kinetic diagram. So I'm going to grab this photo down again. And let's move it down here so we can see the kinetic, maybe, see the kinetic equations. So remember in the kinetic diagram, we draw the accelerations. So we're going to have acceleration of G2, which is going to be horizontal. And we're going to have acceleration at G1 here as well. The nice thing is we know that both of these accelerations are equal to each other. It's not possible for the person to be accelerating at a different rate than the motorcycle. They're respect to each other. They're both accelerating at the same acceleration so let's keep going so how do we take the moments around point b in the kinetic diagram well we just need the mass and the mass will be g2 is 75 so we have 75 times the acceleration in the x direction times the moment arm, the perpendicular distance to this acceleration, which here we have 0.6 plus 0.3, which is 0.9. Now we need to make sure that we get the positive negative sign correct. We're calling counterclockwise positive, and this is going to create a clockwise motion, so that's going to be negative. And likewise, G1 will also create a clockwise moment, and so that will be negative. We have negative 125 times A times the perpendicular distance here, which is 0.6. Solving this equation, we get A is equal to 8.95 meters per second squared. So this is the acceleration needed for us to lift the front wheel off the ground and do a wheelie. Quite a bit of acceleration, about close to 1G. If we consider 9.81, 1G, we're getting pretty close to 1G in acceleration to get this to lift off the ground. Let's take a look at this equation, though. What would help us to do a wheelie without this amount of acceleration? Well, if we take a look at the moment equations here, if we could shift the weight backward a little bit and make these values 0.4 and 0.8 smaller, closer to the back wheel, we would actually need less acceleration to get this front wheel off the ground. Lastly, let's take a look at the amount of friction at the back wheel required to cause this acceleration. So if we go back to FB here, and that's the only force that we have in the X direction. So we have the sum of the forces in the X direction must equal the mass times the acceleration in the X direction about the center of gravity. Don't forget the center of gravity there. So the sum of the forces is this frictional force, which is mu times nb that's the frictional force that's the only friction that's the only force we have in the x direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction center of gravity okay so if we continue on this route we know nb is 1962 and we know the total mass of the whole system that's the rider and the bike was 200 kilograms and then we just solved for the acceleration here we can solve for what coefficient of friction we need between the back tire and the ground this is the coefficient of static friction so we don't spin out 
when we're trying to do this wheelie. And the minimum coefficient, uh, minimum coefficient of static friction that we need turns out to be 0.912. And that's a pretty high coefficient of static friction. And that's why we use rubber because a rubber tire has a very high coefficient of friction against a road.